Geopolitics and Empire is joined by U.S. Uh, Marine Corps veteran Lucas Gage, whose recent commentary on the Ukraine war has gone viral on social media. He's a philosopher and author. His book is Thoughts and Reflections on Life, which you can find at lucasgage.com. Welcome to GNE, Lucas. How you doing, my friend? Thanks for having me on. Yeah, it's uh, good to have you on. Again, your, your video was... Uh, absolutely powerful uh, and you've got uh interesting uh, experience uh being uh in, in the marines uh, being in iraq twice uh deployed and and maybe at a start you know you said you were deployed to iraq you discovered how corrupt and insane our governments are and you became for a while an anti-war activist maybe if you could tell us you know b before getting to ukraine a bit about your background yeah so uh, you know i like every marine well not every marine but i was uh in high school when 9 11 took place and I saw the planes get hit and everything. In fact, I live in New Jersey, so one of the built one of the uh, there's an area where I used to live in Warren, New Jersey, where there was like this um, Washington Monument. I think it was called Washington Road, where it's literally you could see New York like completely perfect. So I remember, you know, I was I was at the dentist. I heard a plane hit the towers. I'm like, wow, that's a bad accident. That's what everyone thought it was an accident. So as I go up, I uh, hear that another plane get hits. I'm like, there's something wrong with this. So I went I went home. And on my way home, I went, I saw New York from the, you know, the mountaintop where I was, because mountainside is another place. And I look out there, I'm like, look at all that smoke. So like, I got to go check on my sister at school. So I drove to school because I, I was taking naps in for that day. I'm like, you all right? She goes, yeah, I'm fine. I'm like, okay. I went back home and, you know, I watched the towers and I, and I thought in my head, you know, I didn't know anything about engineering. I was like, this, something's going to happen. Like, I feel like these are going to fall down. Then they did. I was like, oh my God. So like that whole thing, I'm like, okay, I was only 17. But I was like, you know what? My grandfather was in the Air Force. My great grandfather was a Marine. It's in my blood. I got to do something about this, you know, terror attacks. You know what I mean? So I went to the I went to the Marine Corps. There was uh, what do you call it? One of those like, you know, in high school, the, the career days. They had different people there. They had the Marine Corps. I was like, all right, let me go see. You know, so I, I liked the Marine Corps colors and what they were all about. And so I said, you know, can I sign up? Like, well, you're 17. You're gonna have to come another time. So. What I did was I signed up for the delayed entry program, which at 17, you go hang out with the recruiters. And it takes a year off of your service after the service. So you have four years active and four years reserve. So it will chop off one, you see. So I went there, did my year with the you know delayed entry program. You do pull-ups, you run with the people, you learn about history. And then four days after high school, right to boot camp, literally, boom. I didn't go to summer, none, none of the partying. I was gone. Up, uh, camp. It was Camp Lejeune. I'm sorry, no, no, Paris Island is where I, where I went to boot camp in South Carolina. Then I was I was stationed in Camp Lejeune, and in Camp Lejeune I went to um, engineer school. So I was a combat engineer. Graduated November, and then right after that in February, Iraq, <laughs> well, Kuwait, then Iraq in March, and then a year later, same thing, February 14th, Iraq again. So two tours in Iraq. One was OIF one. One was the other is OIF two. One was five months, one was seven months, so the year total in Iraq. And, you know, I, I didn't know. I just believed everything I was told, you know, typical thing, go fight for the Iraqis. And, uh, you know, I come back to learn about things that are going on in Fallujah. We're using white phosphorus. I'm like, we're the, we're the good guys. What are we doing? Because when I, my, my last year and a half in the Marine Corps, I had an ankle issue, so I wasn't doing other things. I had a lot of time in front of the computer as a MIMS clerk, you like doing inventory and stuff. So I heard about these things. And then, ironically, one of my friends – brothers uh, one of my roommates sent him loose change i don't we don't have to get into all that but that was the second time i looked at the 9-11 i was like wow that is really weird you know so that's that was six months left in the marine corps so once i got the marine corps i went to college university uh not university i went to community college for uh two semesters and then uh during that i was a I, I studied philosophy and communications and i really was investigating like, everything like Every conspiracy, I, I was, used to be Catholic. I no longer am because even religion, I was like, okay, is this real? So my whole world went 180 with beliefs. Everything changed. And, uh, you know, then I was like, you know, there's people out there who are very bad who are pushing these things, you know, and these wars and how many other wars have been based on lies and so on and so forth down the rabbit holes for years. And that's how I pretty much, you know, got into this stuff, you know. So, you know, when I, I then I, as you saw on my website, you know, I got into the political realm for a while and then I decided to quit. And now here we are at the brink of World War III. I'm like, I should probably say something. You know, I should probably do I didn't want to get back into it, but I have to say something. So I made a video and I talked to one of my friends. She's very, very known in, the, in, the, in Twitter. 
I said, you know, if I if we tweak this, it's going to go viral. She goes, I know. I'm like, All right, let's do it. So my whole plan of going into the shadows and become, you know, being an author and never seeing it, it kind of it kind of failed now. But you know what? I think it was necessary. And um, you know, people have to hear this kind of stuff, especially from Americans, because you know, I, I've talked to people from Syria because when, when I used to do war activism, anti-war activism. I was against the war with, uh, with Syria. I was against every war ever since Iraq, obviously. And so I, I'm always pushing the narrative, like we got to, you know, go for peace, investigate the narratives. How many times have they lied to us about everything? You know, so I'm trying to remind people, hey, you forgot about Iraq. You forgot about Syria. You forgot clearly because it seems to me everyone wants this war no matter what. So I was like, wow, what's going Have these people forgotten or what? So that's why I had to say something. I really just was like, you know what? Forget this whole living in the shadows and writing books anymore. I'll still yeah. write books, but you know what I'm trying to say. I, I had to do something, you know. A message from our sponsors. It seems we may be headed for the 1930s all over again. Financial collapse, tyranny, and world war. I've already secured multiple passports, offshore accounts, safe havens, and escaped to the sunnier shores of Mexico. My friend Mikkel Thorup of the Expat Money Show is hosting the Expat Money Summit with 30-plus experts that'll help you reclaim freedom in this fourth turning by moving your life and wealth offshore. Protect yourself and secure a new life abroad. Register now for free at expatmoneysummit.com or don't and enjoy surviving on insect protein while stuck in the metaverse. Since 2020, Ron Unz of Unz.com has argued the COVID outbreak was due to a U.S. biowarfare attack against China and Iran. Jeffrey Sachs, the Russian Ministry of Defense, and others are now making similar suggestions. Weeks before COVID appeared in Wuhan, a top U.S. biowarfare official ran the Crimson Contagion exercise on how to protect America against infection if a dangerous virus suddenly appeared in China. After COVID appeared in Wuhan, it jumped to Iran, infecting Iranian leadership only weeks after America had assassinated Iran's military commander. Iran publicly accused America of an illegal biowarfare attack and filed a complaint with the UN. Ron Unz has produced a free ebook and is available for interviews to further discuss this issue. And don't forget to fund Geopolitics and Empire. You can leave a donation, except on Patreon or PayPal, which have banned us, book a consultation, or become a member. The, there was a similar trajectory. I mean, obviously, I didn't sign up to, to be a Marine. I did do Peace Corps uh, in Mo Mongolia. But w when you say your waking up process, you know, I think it was 2003. Um, I, I watched Loose Change. I went down the rabbit hole. And as you said, you you study this. It doesn't make um sense and you know i i remember uh back in 2001 two or, or three I had, an, I had an iraqi girlfriend who was from baghdad and she wanted to do everything she could not to go back to iraq uh, i marched into uh, against the war in 2003 in chicago where i'm from and it, later on one of my professors was actually saddam hussein's defense lawyer dutch american uh curtis uh dobler when i studied in, in in geneva but um you know maybe to get your broader view because i think this is all connected 9 11 iraq oh, uh syria Ukraine, and it goes back to American empire, which I, I think I've seen you comment on. And, and even when I was falling down the 9-11 rabbit hole, I didn't realize America was an empire. I thought I was just a U.S. citizen. And you're like, whoa, mm -hmm. we're an empire, and we're doing all of this stuff. And so what's sort of your view on, you know, from 9-11 to Iraq, the global war on terror? And it's, it basically seems like America is going for full spectrum dominance. They're trying to literally take over the whole planet. I mean, I would argue they have, essentially. I mean, you know, I was born in Italy. And so I remember being the American in the you know the town that I was in, like, oh, American, how are you? you know, and I'd have all my cool technology, the LA lights with the shoes, remember those things? Or i bring rollerblades, and these kids didn't know what they were. And I every time i come back to Italy as I got older, it would become more westernized, you know? Like, everything was changing. So the West has not only dominated culturally, you see this stuff, you know, this leftism, more feminism, all this stuff traveling around the world, going to different countries where you wouldn't think you'd find them. This globalism is what it is. Neoliberal globalism is what it is. Even in Italy, I was like, well, as I got older, the last time I went to Italy was 2006 when I got out of the Marine Corps. I was like, wow, everything has changed here. Holy God. You know what I mean? So it is an empire and it's doing more than just military conquest, cultural conquest, financial conquest. You know, there's these hitmen out there that, you know, put your country in debt with the IMF and now you owe them everything and you're completely screwed. So it, it is uh, multifaceted and full spectrum dominance in every meaning of the word of dominance in every way. So, you know, people want to be like America, but they don't understand, you know, we're not doing that great. You know, yeah, our GDP and our stock, everyone talks about these numbers, if that matters. I would argue the Americans are the sickest people on earth, mentally, physically, 
you know, dying of heart attacks because they're so obese. The dumbest country in a way. We got we have to import people to do all these jobs, you know, that are supposed to be like you know technology and all this other stuff. And I I don't see the America that I even want to go fight for exist anymore. Just twenty years ago, it's completely different, you know. So this empire I think is spreading too thin too, and I think the world's getting sick of it. And I think that's a good thing, you know. But um, yes, absolutely an empire. And again, we have done a lot of the bad guys. We've been the bad guys for a long time. You know, and every time they talk about Iran is dangerous. Iran, Iran's been around for, they haven't touched another country in 300 years. Other than the Iraq-Iran war, which is a war we instigated, I'm sure, with Saddam. You know, we've, been, we've been at war for like 96% of our existence. You know, we're always at war or funding war or doing something. It's not like we're peaceful people at all. And of course, I'm not talking about me and my fellow citizens. I'm talking about this, you know, government, the the political elite, whatever the case, military industrial complex, which, by the way, we were warned by Eisenhower and other presidents. It's not like it's a secret, you know. So, yeah, we're an empire, unfortunately, and it's uh, we've killed a lot of people and and we're run by psychopaths, no question about it. So, you know. Unfortunately, now Ukraine is becoming a pawn of ours, or has been for a while, and this is what I was commenting on. Um, but that's the thing about this, man. It's just that we are dominating everyone, and I think that that time is coming to an end, which I think is a good thing. But I don't know. <laughs> maybe these people who run the country don't. Of course they don't. But I don't know. I think that we we have to, as Americans, be more honest. And I'm glad to see in the anti-war movement that we're able to criticize ourselves openly. You know, a lot of people are like myself, a lot of former veterans. Uh, one of the guys I know, Philip Girardi, former CIA counterterrorist. I get a lot of my information from him or even Colonel McGregor, Lieutenant Colonel McGregor. Like, we have patriots have come out who've retired from the military who, you know, for example, Phil Girardi left his job at the CIA because of the lies of Iraq before the war. You know what I mean? So he inspired me too. I've spoken to him a few times. And uh, the thing is, is there's just, they're not going to be amplified by the mainstream media, you know? So that's another problem. Yeah. J- just on the social thing. I mean, I felt this back in 2006 when I decided to permanently expatriate from the U S like socially uh, America is sick. Just so many people on prescription drugs, illegal drugs, just, I mean, it's it's night and day when you live in other countries, uh, as I have. That's not to say there's many fantastic uh, Americans and, and very kind kind and generous Americans, but you do see that the, there is this growing uh, problem. And um, I, I guess to get to Ukraine then, because um, as you said, the empire is spreading itself thin. But then we get to that, you know, if you look at history, the historical cycles of empire, the the Thucydides uh, trap, right? Where sometimes the empire will go out with a kind of like a fart, slow decline, or it might try to start something, and it looks like they're poking the Russian bear uh, as well as China. And I've interviewed, um, you know, what comes to my my interview with Dr. Francis Boyle, where we talked about this, and he calls it um, unlimited imperialism. When you've got an empire, it's just going to try to go for the gold, uh, you know, go for broke. And they really want to d- dismember Russia, as you said, to use Ukraine. And then, you know, th- they're meddling in the South China Sea with um, Taiwan. And so what are your thoughts, your, your, your further thoughts on what's going on in Ukraine with Russia, Putin, Xi Jinping? And, you know, what's the what how do you assess the, the, the real threat danger here? You know, escalation and, and, and all of that. Well, like I said, I, I don't I think the American empire is stretched too thin. For one, I and mean, we have so many mil- 700, 800 military bases around the world. I mean, how do we, you know, and we spend so much money on uh, on our, our defense, which is really offense, let's be honest, right? <laughs> and it's just, how can we afford it any longer? And we're giving billions and billions, and the people here have a lot of problems. You know, the COVID thing didn't help anyone, you know, and people lost their 40% of businesses were wiped out. They're not coming back. You know, all the billionaires made more money for sure. But like, we're taking, we're, we're always putting our noses in these things. And no one knew about Ukraine. Just like if, last year, no one cared. Nobody cared. Nobody even know what to. Most people don't even know how to spell Ukraine in America. They don't know where it is. They don't know anything about it. But now everyone's changing their flags. Zelensky is a hero. And look, I'm trying to be unbiased in this situation. I even made a poll uh, about the Ukraine. You know, should the, are, you think the referendums are a sham or not? And th- the first amount of uh, people polling it, you know, on the tweet, it was all. Of course, it's legit. Then all of a sudden, the NAFO, you ever see these NAFO people? Oh, yeah, yeah. 
all of a sudden get this poll. It's like, where are these people coming from? It's almost like they're bots. I know they're not, they're probably real people, but who are these people? And they're pushing these narratives that are going to lead Ukraine into a disaster. Like they must not care. We're going to expand no matter what, you know, NAFO or whatever. I'm like, do you guys understand that Russia, not only is it a nuclear power, like these people have been around for thousands, what, 1100 years they've been around for a long time. And if you want to go back to World War II, they they will do anything to win. They lost hundred millions of men. To the, Germany had the best army, advanced. They had rockets, jets, and you know what? It was the Soviets that did the the final damage. It wasn't the United States. Yeah, we came in and all that, but the Soviets took Berlin. They they threw waves of men. So if if Putin and if the Russian people, which they do believe that this is an ex- essential threat, this NATO expansion is like they're going to kill us. They're going to break our country into pieces. You don't think Russia is going to do everything they can? Forget minus nuclear war. Let's not go too far because that's going to kill everyone if that happens. But you think Russia is going to be like, oh, okay, I, I, I quit. They're going to give back these four regions. Absolutely not. So this is going to lead to Ukraine being destroyed. You know, so I tell these Ukrainians, you know, when I talk to them, take the peace deal, sit down. I know you don't like it. Just it's probably better to lose four regions than your whole country. And now we're seeing. The, the 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 bombardment of all these cities that Putin has been doing, and I'll be honest with you, when I gave the Ukrainians the benefit of the doubt, like maybe I'm I'm falling for Russian propaganda. Okay, I thought, okay, let me do some research. Look, look at this Buka massacre. I looked into it. Why are these people dead with white armbands? That that says that they're helping Russians. And you said that you'll kill all collaborators like pigs, and here they are, staged on the ground. And I'm like, and by the way, you assassinated. Daria Dugan, who was not an enemy combatant, yeah, she said mean things about Russia, whatever the case, but that's like, imagine if the Russians, for some reason, and Jordan Peterson is an uh, American, but let's suppose, he's well known, Jordan Peterson. Ah, well, let's go blow up his daughter, Mikhaila. Why not? She said mean things, boom. It's like, everyone would condemn that. But Daria was killed, no one said anything. Oh, that's just a hit list, uh, LOL, she's been liquidated. And then they did a truck bomb, or whatever happened on that bridge, could have been more who knows what happened? It could have been more than a truck, which I probably think it was also we helped them do it. The pipeline. I mean, this is terrorism at this point. Now, if you're winning a war, you don't have to do that kind of stuff. Now, I remember when Assad was kicking the crap out of the rebels, Al-Qaeda, al nusra Front, ISIS, essentially. They're saying, oh, no, he's using gas on his civilians. No, you were using the gas 55 other times. You're the ones who need to make these events staged so that the United States can act as an air force for you. So Ukraine, they're saying, we're, you know, and I'm not saying they're not fighting. I'm not saying they're not taking Russians out. I'm sure they're fighting hard. But they're the ones who are in a position where they have no air force. They have nothing. They're in a weak, they're their inferior military. They have to resort to these things, deception and all this other stuff, because the army is much larger. And Russia is going to completely kick their ass. I'm sorry to say it. And I've been trying to warn people that these dogs, these Dogecoin dogs and these memes aren't going to win anything. And people are getting killed. And, I, and I'm saying that on a... For the civilians of Ukraine, I'm not saying, yeah, go Russia, kill everyone. I'm not saying that. Even being neutral, I've been attacked, you know? And I'm like, and they're saying, well, what, what should Ukraine should just roll over? No, listen, if you think Putin's a madman who will kill everyone, and he's offering you peace, sit down and talk at least. No, we're not going to take it. We're going to get rid of Putin. We're going to take Crimea back. We're going to do it until Putin's ousted and killed. I'm like, who's feeding you this? Well, clearly NATO and the U.S., and who knows what other intelligence agencies are filling Ukrainians with this this arrogance, which they shouldn't have, that's going to get them killed, unfortunately. And and that's how that's why I said the United States in the video does not give a damn about the Ukrainians at all, because they wouldn't put them on this suicide mission, because Russia will not back down. And you could, you know, even J.J. Uh, Mersheimer has said it, you know, if, if Putin can't get it, he'll just wreck Ukraine. I don't want to see that. You know, so, I mean, I'm sure you heard all these narratives. He's going to take all of Europe. and He's the next Hitler. I'm like, what? He wants a buffer state between NATO. And if he takes all of Ukraine, he's right next to NATO. It defeats the entire purpose. Are you thinking or not? You know, these people. No, he's going to kill us all genocide. And, you know, you know, another thing is they always start with the invasion. I'm like, what about the coup that all these people admit happened? You know, like, for example, this Phil Girardi, former CIA, he, he's like, yeah, we had a coup. You know, obviously it's there. Everyone knows it. No, it didn't happen. It was this. It was that. No, you were shelling Ukrainians and they voted out of it. No, oh, it's a sham. Okay, then do what Elon said. No, <laughs> I guess there's no appeasing you either, you know? 
so these people are all for it and uh, I, I don't know yeah you, you mentioned the propaganda in ukraine i mean it's it's um i was in europe this summer in, in my home of croatia and a lot of people just lap it up there americans as well they all put up their ukrainian flags you know first it was their face mask and then it's a ukrainian oh. flag even here in mexico people don't have a clue they, they they come to me i'm from croatia and they're like oh i just so bad what's happening in your country i'm like ukraine i'm croatian so people, you know, <laughs> people still don't have yeah. this uh you know well we had our war 30 years ago so but um so you you think again that the empire's stretching itself thin yeah you know I, i've had on johan galtung who's 90 plus years the founder of peace Com peace and conflict studies he said I love the American Republic. Uh, I hate the American Empire. And that's how I've come to uh, view things. And so uh, you said you don't think we'll get to nuclear war. You know, hopefully we don't get there. So somehow this will be resolved. I mean, if the war doesn't expand in, in Europe, um, you know, the other concern is what happens at home, which you were talking about. Things are just f falling apart socially, which you mentioned, um, economically, which you mentioned. I think uh, we're also starting to see tyranny rise in america which is part of that historical cycle you know everyone's a lot of people being deplatformed this expansion of domestic terror basically to go after americans who are you know patriotic and who um so and, and now there's talk of second civil war in in, in america so what, what are your thoughts um if we just extra if you extrapolate further what do you see happening uh, at home well i feel that the people in charge here you know the, i call them the parasite class which is all these people who rule and they don't give anything back to us they take everything from us they control everything basically and they control the way we think they control our academics they they're the ones pushing cancel culture these people and it, there's many different families involved it's they're all different backgrounds and they just benefit from the chaos they love division the and what do you do in the united states race race has been the wound from day one right so black versus white now it's everyone versus white. Now you could be racist against white people. It's totally okay. Totally, white privilege, white this, white that. So they do that now. Then they're doing this gender thing. Nobody knows what gender they are anymore. Any division imaginable, they'll do it for here. That's what they love to do because then it distracts us from all the people robbing us from Wall Street. That's what it is. You know, Occupy Wall Street, everyone was there from every background. No one cared about anything. Stop these criminals on Wall Street. Oh, yeah, you want to do that? Okay, what about the wage gap? Oh, now people started getting the gender stuff and feminist and all that other things. And that's what they do. They just, once they can, because people think like Hollywood is real. I know it's a fake movie, but based on a true story, or did you see that? And they make these old wombs of racism or all the, all their agendas are in, even in Disney at this point. Like you can't even watch a cartoon without an agenda, a woke agenda or something like this engineered into it. Sports, you can't watch something without someone kneeling or not kneeling or saying it's wrong, or it's right. Everything is divisive now. Everything. Mask, no mask, vaccine, no vaccine, everything. And I'm like, wow. And I so I see what they're doing. And they're keeping us uh, divided in these different lines that they just make up every year, new ones, so that no one says, wait a minute, what about the Federal Reserve? What about these you know private banks and these trillions that we're spending on? We don't we don't want to send to Ukraine. We don't want to do this. Like we can't afford anything anymore. Everything's, you know. The dollar is so strong right now. Yeah, but you see, everything you're doing to Putin, you're driving him toward China. They're going to establish BRICS and goodbye, dollar. And now Saudi Arabia, what are they saying? You know what? I, we can't trust the United States. And Biden just said something about we have to reevaluate what we're doing with Saudi Arabia. You know, if they don't use our petrodollar, <laughs> there goes the United States hegemony. Again, probably a good thing for you know people who want a real country one day, but very painful process, you know. So Americans may start to see what it's like around the world. You know, Europe is supposed to be going through some crap right now because the gas thing is going to be an issue. Everyone's paying more money. Ga gas is $4 a gallon, crazy things like this. And, you know, of course, the people in charge aren't going to feel these problems. The people are. And that's where you're saying the cycle happens. You know, people get frustrated. So COVID was a big slap in the face. And now this is happening. And this way, now, God for, now I'm not saying nuclear war can't happen. I think if Putin somehow loses or things go wrong or there's a terrorist attack into something very bad, maybe a tactical nuke would be deployed. I don't know. I don't know what would happen if that happens. You know, that's very dangerous. What would be our response? You know, I mean, let's hope we never see such a thing. I don't think the Russians would do it unless they're literally about to lose, you know, like, okay, they're at Moscow. <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen either. So, you know, the China thing, I, I think China and Russia are becoming closer. I don't, I know it. I don't think I know. I've been reading about it. And I'm no expert, by the way, on these. I just see the headlines as, okay, what does this mean? Oh, okay. 
So China did not condemn the annexation of Crimea. They invested in that port. Okay, they don't want Russia to lose. And you know what? They may even go for Taiwan. Who knows? That might be another move they might make because America looks weak under Biden. The guy can't speak, can't talk. Under Trump, may, maybe this wouldn't have happened. I don't know. But, you know, brother, I think that you know this world is going. I mean, now we have Azerbaijan. We got all these people now going at war all, all of a sudden, just randomly going crazy. Maybe it's that time for everyone to go nuts. But I tell people, you know, it's going to get ugly out there and we got to prevent World War III. It could happen, man. I mean, how many times have something stupid happened? This Archduke gets assassinated, World War I. Some guy gets shot, you know, you know, the Treaty of Versailles pissed off Germany. Here comes Hitler, World War II. I mean, you know, this could happen. One thing can happen where it's just uh, everyone goes crazy. Now, Belarus is moving troops, apparently, into this situation. So there's another country involved. I mean, what if NATO's like, you know, we're going in. Okay, now that's World War Three. Just one decision. All right, we're going in. Forget it. You know, let's go. Yeah, this is what I've been pointing. As you, I mean, I feel like I'm I mean, talking. Let me tell you, I honestly yeah. didn't think Putin would invade. I don't think anyone thought he Did you think he was going to invade Crimea, uh, the Ukraine? No, no. I don't think anyone. I really was like, wow, he really did it. I didn't think he was. But he did. So <laughs> anything can happen now. We live in a world where anything can happen. You could be any gender you want. So anything can literally happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I feel like I'm talking to myself. I mean, like it's yeah. it's it's it's. I, the, the, you're just explaining everything that um, uh, you know, as I see it, and everything's flaring up now. These flashpoints, as you said, the Caucasus, um, you know, the U.S. border, Ukraine, Taiwan. I mean, you, you just you know, India, Pakistan, uh, border oh, yeah. can can flare up, uh, and of course, the Middle East. But um, and, and so, like I said, a lot of us are coming to these similar conclusions. And then it's like becomes, what do we do? And and I, I wanted to read a quote from your website. You said, quote, I was very angry and resentful at this time. I really hated how corrupt the system was. It drove me into politics, becoming an anti-war activist. I spent many years exposing the warmongers and corrupt traitors in our government. But after years of activism, I only made a small dent in the narrative and the stress and anxiety trying to wake everyone up only made my PTSD worse, uh, end quote. And like, uh, I kind of feel the same way. Like, I, I often find myself in this position where I just want to go away to a farm and a garden by the sea and, and forget about politics and all of this nonsense. And so, you know, just in terms of like, just looking forward solutions or, or for the people that are still doing uh, activism and, and feel passionate about speaking out, just, you know, your thoughts on uh, different ways uh, forward. Well, before I, I got it, when I was an anti-war activist, I also did other forms of activism, like against anti-white racism. I pissed off very different powerful groups. And so, you know, that got me banned from Twitter and the COVID thing. So I, I was like, you know, I'm just tired of putting myself out there and trying so hard. And the, the what I mean by politics in that sentence is like, what did Biden say? What did Trump say? Like that kind of dog and pony show. I'm actually more interested in global geopolitical stuff. Like, Israel, Palestine, you know, Iran, Syria. I'm anti that anti that's in my nature. So, like I was saying off camera before we started, or did I say it on the interview? I don't know. <laughs> but I said, um, I was gonna just go on and write books and forget about it. You know, the world is the way it is. There's always been more. What can I do? But I felt like, you know what, this is something I actually like to discuss in a political fashion. You know, I'm not not a political fashion, in a philosophical way. Back then. When I was doing activism, I would degrade my opponent. You're an idiot. You know what you're talking about. This time on my Twitter, you won't see me do that. People will call me moron, idiot, shill. Like, how do you know this, that? Doing like a Socratic method, not getting emotional. So in that paragraph, I was angry, frustrated, and resentful. All emotions of impotence. I can't do anything. And so now that I've let it go, kind of like a Taoist, you know, let go with the flow, I've released all those emotions. You know, whether I, I can't control anything out there, but I can still be my the person that I am, be a stoic as well. Marcus Aurelius very much influenced me. Lao Tzu, Alan Watts is one of my favorites as well. And I kind of have this Buddhist mindset, go with the flow, but also a stoic uh, ability to control my thoughts. And I just, all right, well, I can't change the world, but I could at least be a change and a light and, and speak in a way where people can see, hey, why don't we stop yelling at each other? We all want the same thing, peace. How do we do it? Is your way better than my way? Is it better to make Ukraine to go all in crazy to get them out of there or maybe sit down, you know? So in a way, approaching this situation, a political situation in a different way, philosophically, without the emotions attached to it, letting, because we can't control it. I'm not the president. I'm not, you know, none of these. I'm just a person on the internet. 
but words can change people. You know, philosophies can change people, ideas can change people. And you know, you, you can make a dent in the narrative, but I think honestly, the masses, yeah, they need tough love. I mean, they have to learn the hard way most of the time. And we see this all the time. We see people who see what's coming. Hey guys, you're an idiot, you know what you're talking about, you know. And then things say, oh, okay, maybe he's right. But they kind of have to get that taste of the, you know, bad stuff to really see it and, and accept it as reality. Because a lot of people live in a bubble. You know, they're very distracted. They don't, they don't even care about politics at all. Like, they don't even watch politics. I don't blame them because it's very boring. They'll watch Netflix for 15 hours and know every character in this fake thing. You know, or, or watch sports and know every battering average of every batter. They don't know their own constitution. They don't know their own laws. They don't know their own rights. <laughs> so... You know, but it's because they're distracted. That they're they're swamped with problems. The mortgage payments, the work, the emails. I got to do. The kids are yelling, so people are are really uh, stressed out anyway. Then they got the social media thing, which is even more anxiety, more intensity, and it's just the human human being has never been like this. You know, we're, everything's at our fingertips. We're, our, our attention span is virtually a few seconds at this point. And it just drives everyone crazy. So, of course, they're going to stay away from the you know big topics. And very few people are going to be philosophically minded or care about the rest of the world or even their own country. And so we're kind of seeing this uh, hyper-individualism and the consequences of it, you know? So that's why I was like, yeah, maybe people just need to get their asses beat somehow. You know, maybe they got to lose their job. Maybe they have to you know, be treated like put on your mask or, you know, this police state thing has to happen. I, I don't know, but, you know, that, but you know what, it is in my nature to speak righteous. And so, so me coming back from my hiatus to make that video was just natural for me. It took no effort. I, there's no script. As you could see, I just said what I said. There's one edit because I had to do it to fit in the video. You know what I mean? The two minutes, the two, 20, 20, uh, two minute and 20 second the limitation on Twitter, you know, I had to say something. I just felt it was right to do. So for those people who are frustrated with people not learning, well, it, just think of it as a time buffer. You know the truth. You tell it, plant a seed. And over time, people go, yeah. I remember when I watched 9-11, uh, Loose Change, no one, you're crazy, you're insane. Now everyone's like, you know what? Yeah, it, like, most people, like, you're crazy if you think the official narrative is legit. It takes time. The people have this a uh, buffer, you know, to just like, it's like loading, you know what I mean? It's like, they didn't catch up to you yet, you see? Yeah. So it's something we have to be patient with, you know, it, it, that's the truth. The pioneers, people who change the world, it's not many, you know, one inventor does this, another does that. It's not like everyone thought of the light bulb. You know, the people have their, they have their things that they do and they're distracted and they don't have time for that stuff. And so those of us who see the truth got to say it without anger and frustration and hatred. You know, I've done that. And, you know, yeah, you know what that does? It, it riles up the people who, who like what you're saying. And then everyone else who disagrees won't listen. So this approach, I've like, I'm doing it out of love. Like, listen, maybe you disagree with me, whatever. But here, why don't you look at this? That, I think, is the most important thing I've learned over the years. Yeah. And I agree with you that, you know, again, going back to philosophy and some ancient philosophers saying, you no, know, pain is the best teacher. And I think people are going to have to get punched in the face, lose their jobs whatever uh injured in different ways before they finally start figuring out what's going on we are just like donkeys you can use um you know uh, the from the old testament the 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 don you know the, the, i think the analogies of people we're like donkeys we need to get smacked and um uh stoicism as well i'm uh, just like you I, I think stoicism as you said we're, uh, i get all kinds of insults and they just fall like water because i'm very yeah. stoic stoic and i really don't care you you can't uh, when it comes to words or you can't get to me um <laughs> and that's how you know that's how we should be and, and you mentioned the netflix and the sports that was one reason i left america in the 2000s because everyone around me every weekend all they did was get drunk yep. you know, go to the bar talk they, they knew all the sports teams and players and talking about cars and the weather and, and film and i'm like I want to read intellectual stuff. I want to figure out what's going on. And so I just I just felt like I need, I went to get as far away. I went to the Gobi Desert in Mongolia. I just wanted to go uh, uh, away. And so um, any final then, any other thought or final thought uh, to leave us uh, with? Yeah, I just, for the audience watching, you know, like I said, this is for those of us who could foresee what's coming or have this uh, empathy for everyone, that we care about others, not just ourselves, and we want to do good in this world. 
you know, it, the world honestly hasn't changed much. It's always the same problems, but in different forms. So, you know, don't be like, oh my God, we're all going to blow up. And man, there's been worse wars than we, 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 the Black Plague killed 30 million people or whatever in Europe, a third of them. What COVID do? You know what I mean? Like, so things are similar, but different. And so I, I just want the listeners to understand for those of you who want to make a difference, even though I made a small debt in the narrative and I was kind of putting myself down, which I always used to do, by the way, I no longer do it. That small debt was actually very big, to be honest with you. Like, uh, when I was against the Syrian war, you know, one of the videos I made back in my old Twitter account went viral. WikiLeaks retweeted it. And I'm sure Donald Trump may have saw it, but it was too late anyway. So, yeah, maybe it's a small dent, but it's a, a dent that I can make. Why not make one? So everyone watching, if you have a skill set, something to do that's positive, make sure you do it out of love. You know, I hate politics to this day, but I love to help people see and different perspectives. You know, I love philosophy. I love to teach people things, how to think critically. So if you love to do something, do it and just go back and do it and go with the flow. And like I said, this world is going to have its challenges and we're going to have to bear them. And that's what makes it interesting. Imagine if everything was perfect. You'd probably get really bored and want some problems to deal with, you know? Yeah. So uh, as a Stoic, is, and even as a Taoist, if you will, I don't like to label myself. You know, I don't let these external things affect who you are. And I let them affect me uh, back then. I did. And it really bothered me, caused my PTSD to get worse. But, you know, we can change the world by changing ourselves. If you make yourself stable and become an example of, you can become an example of that stability for others to emulate. And then slowly everyone around you improves. So if you're doing activism or speaking out against the war or something like this, do it in that way. And look at people who are, you know, out of their minds that I've dealt with on Twitter as infected people. And you're a doctor. You don't say, get out of my office, you moron, you know, but you liberal, you Democrat, you you Republican, you racist, you know, right? You say, all right, well, why do you think that? Why do you believe that? Socratic method, absolutely use that. And kindness. You know, one of the, if you see my Twitter quote, it's paraphrased Lao Tzu. This quote would, broke my heart because I, I realized how many things I was doing wrong when talking to people. Uh, Lao Tzu says, if I remember correctly, he says, uh, if someone seems wicked, do not cast them away. Awaken them with your words. Uplift them with your deeds. And <clears throat> what does he say after that? He says, repay, repay their injury with your kindness. Do not cast away. Do not cast them away. Cast away his wickedness. You see what I'm saying? So what do people do? What do you support? Oh, you're a Biden support? Oh, screw you. You're wrong. You're the, they do the opposite. They don't, they're insulting. They don't, they're not kind. They don't awaken them with the words. There's more ad hominems, attacks. That's not the way to go. So that's the one thing I want everyone in the audience to understand is to be kind to someone who's infected with disinformation. Be that doctor to cure them. And if they can't be cured, okay, please accept. I got to go. I have another patient. Think of it like that. Don't take anything personal, like you were saying. Let the insults. Man, these people are sick. They're coughing. <coughs> what they're doing, you know. So that's my advice to everyone listening. That's what I learned over time, and um, that's really it. But in regards to the war, let's hope that the Ukrainians come to their senses. You know, I, I've seen some articles on mainstream media saying we should probably push for peace. Actually, on Newsweek, I think one someone wrote it. Like, you know, maybe this whole Putin thing is not a good idea. Let's just sit down. Hopefully people come to their senses. That would be the best case. Um, so we'll see. But yeah, still have to say, just everyone, you know, strap in and be patient and loving and caring for people. But don't let it drive you insane because it's not of our control anyway. Mm -hmm. And you've got a book uh, as well. Where can people get that? Yeah, you can go to lucasgage.com. And you could buy it there. Well, it's going to link you to Amazon anyway. If you go to Amazon, you just go, uh, type in Lucas Gage, and you'll probably get my uh, book title there. It's uh, nine ninety nine on on paperback, but if you have a Kindle, it's only two ninety nine, and it's free if you have Kindle Unlimited. So if you have a Kindle Unlimited, read my book for free. It's got good reviews so far, and um, you know, it's I think it's a good book. <laughs> I say that because in it, it's not just me giving you aphorisms. I also used to do life coaching and I did NLP. So I even give you exercises to overcome, you know, thoughts and negative emotions. I, I give you perspective. I do talk about politics a little bit, you know, but it's not a politically driven book. It's like Marcus Aurelius's meditations, literally formatted that way. There's uh, there's 21 sections in there and each section has 15 entries. So you're reading 
different things. There's nothing. This it's not like chapter one, long drawn chapter about one subject. It's every entry. They're completely different. It could be one sentence to two paragraphs to two pages, depending. And you'll never get bored of reading it. So everyone who's read it's like, wow, I've never read a book like this. And that was the whole point. It's an easy read, and it's literally covers everything about life, relationships, politics, even self help, fitness, you name it. And so far, everyone loves it who's read it because, again, easy read, and they can relate to it. Just like I related to Marcus Aurelius, who, again, wrote to himself and wrote in sections and was just talking to himself. So that's my uh, that was my contribution to him, to the emperor, because I loved what he did. It inspired me, so I wrote the book. You know, I'll, I'll get the I'll get the Kindle. Uh, I live in a sure. tiny house, and I'm down in Mexico, so it takes a while to get physical books. And uh, keep up, uh, again, as you feel like it, keep up the... Uh, you know, good commentary and, and work on on Twitter and wh- wherever else. Uh, it helps a, a lot of us out. It shows that we're not crazy again. I mean, you've got you're a veteran. You've been to Iraq. Um, yeah. You've got uh, authority there, and um, I think the government doesn't like, especially when, when people like you speak out. I mean, it's a story for another day. We've seen what happens, sure. like people like Pat uh, Tillman and 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 others, but. Uh, Again, lucasgage.com. Find him on Twitter at lucasgage84. And thank you for being on Geopolitics and Empire. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this Geopolitics and Empire podcast. The website is geopoliticsandempire.com. And I encourage you to sign up for the free email list that goes out with each podcast and every weekend with a collection of news headlines. The newsletter and website are our last lines of defense. We're being censored and deplatformed. It's nearly impossible to find Geopolitics and Empire on the Google search engine. We've been blacklisted. YouTube frequently takes down our videos with strikes. Facebook restricts our page. Reddit and Twitter take down posts. And after the Associated Press mentioned Geopolitics and Empire in a 2021 article co-written with NATO, our Patreon account was terminated. Vimeo also terminated our Pro account. The best free way to help Geopolitics and Empire is to leave a review on Apple Podcasts or elsewhere and subscribe to all of our media channels. You can find the video broadcast now on five platforms, Odyssey, Rockfin, Rumble, BitChute, and Brighteon. You can find the audio broadcast on the podcast ecosystem, SoundCloud, Apple, Spotify, and so on. My current favorite social media channels are Twitter and Telegram, but you can also find us on Gab, MeWe, Minds, Float, VK, Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Finally, Geopolitics and Empire is in dire need of funding to continue. You can leave a donation, purchase a consultation with the host, or become a member to receive additional benefits. We also produce a weekly broadcast called Dissident Thinker for members and Rockfin subscribers only. We will continue to fight the good fight come hell or high water. Thank you for listening.